All right, so we are Group 9, uh, Kyle Faley, David Lindner, and Phil Brzezinski, and our project is the solar power supply. All right, so I guess in this we're going to cover a little bit of an introduction, uh, then we're each going to take a turn explaining our parts. I did the analog circuit part, uh, Dave took care of the microcontroller circuit, and, or excuse me, Dave took care of the PC software, and Phil took care of the microcontroller circuit. Give you a little bit of a system overview, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap things up and explain some of our design troubles and uh, considerations and things along those lines. So, <clears throat> our sponsor, Professor Kruger, and many researchers at IHR use remote solutions in order to acquire data for research projects. Um, a common way to power those devices is with a solar panel. Um, but one problem that comes up when you do that is verifying the design. Uh, you have to make sure you test for different weather conditions, different uh, light intensities, different temperatures, um, in order to know that you get good data and that your device works at all times. So how can we simplify the testing process? One solution, and the solution that we chose in fact, is to create a benchtop power supply that will mimic a solar panel in its output behavior, which is to say, if you look at the voltage current relationship on the board, that's what a regular solar panel in normal operation looks like roughly. So our, the output of our power supply was going to have a control system that would force it to mimic that transfer characteristic. All right, so getting into the analog circuit part, um, the goal was to design an analog control system to either source or sync current based on the microcontroller input. And that's what I mean by source or sync current is we want it to, the, the box to act like it's supplying power or have the capability to also act like it's running off of a backup battery, say like at night when during a recharge cycle. So the big factors in this design were driving the output, actually driving the output stage of the power supply, <clears throat> as well as interfacing with the microcontroller and actually sensing the current from the output and feeding it back to the microcontroller to achieve our control. So solutions to this problem being, um, you can see here the driver and the MOSFET in this section of the control system. We decided to use a, a class AB MOSFET driver, which is an N-channel and a P-channel MOSFET hooked up with the, the sources hooked together. And what we're doing is we're driving that with an op amp follower. So basically, whatever happens right here, the op amp will basically drive it to compensate for it. So um, give me the click on that. Um, I guess the whole goal, really, of this control system is to take in a pulse with modulated control input from the microcontroller and just do some signal processing because we want that control signal from the microcontroller to actually control the MOSFETs. So basically control how much current is either flowing in or out of the system. So I guess what I do from that is the PWM control is take it in and use a comparator to get it, I guess, between the rails where we want it of the op amp and then do some low pass filtering to clean up the signal and get rid of some switching noise and then put it through the driver and drive the MOSFET. So I guess I did that with a a fourth order sound key low pass filter, a couple of cascaded low pass filters there. So move on. And um, the current sensor up there is what we used. Um, this is a Hall effects current sensor. What it does is it induces a magnetic field proportional to the current that's flowing through the device. So what this little output guy does right here is it takes that current and it um, outputs a voltage that is proportional to current. So we have current to voltage transfer right there so we don't have to do any A to D converting. So um, I take that output, um, I amplify it, and then I send it to the microcontroller so Phil can process it and bring it back in and control the circuit. Okay, so my task was to come up with the, the digital control circuit for this uh, device. And we knew that it needed to be able to store the information about the data tables it needed to have some sort of a way to apply this information to the outputs, and then there needed to be some kind of a user interface so that the user could see the current uh, voltage flowing as well as select different tables uh, to model. So as a solution, we chose to use the Rabbit LP3500 because it's widely used by IHR already, and it had all the peripheral devices we needed built in right to the board. 
the control algorithm that we used to make this work uh, is actually fairly straightforward. What we do is we look at the output current and voltage, as Kyle was talking about the sensor earlier. Uh, we look those values up in a lookup to an IV lookup table for the particular panel we're looking at, and then we adjust the output voltage higher or lower depending on what that table says we should be operating at. And this cycles over and over and causes it to track to the IV curve. Um, so uh, additionally, we have we use the Rabbit's own LCD interface, uh, which is a separate module that plugs right in, has some functions, uh, made it fairly easy to develop for. Uh, on there, we display the current voltage power in real time, as well as there's a menu system using the buttons that allows the user to switch between different tables. Uh, these tables are stored on a file system in flash memory, so that uh, it persists even if there's a power outage. Um, and we also have serial communication with the PC to allow more tables to be downloaded to the device. So one of our goals in this project was to make our power supply reconfigurable. Uh, you can add new uh, solar panels. And so we wanted to give them an easy, give users an easy way to uh, define that behavior. Uh, and we chose to do that through the computer. So uh, what the computer does for us is they can enter in different data points, that IV curve we've been talking about, and then upload that to the power supply. So uh, with data entry, something that you might naturally think of is Microsoft Excel. Uh, we chose it because many people are familiar with it. Um, we use Visual Basic to interface with Microsoft Excel. It's a programming language that can do that and that just simplifies the user's uh, experience. Um, so actually defining how the power supply should behave uh, translates into filling out this data table. Um, you can also, if you don't want to fill out the whole table, specify a, a portion of it and then use either Excel's built-in fill tools or an interpolation tool we've added in order to uh, give you the rest of the data points. We've also added in a graphical uh, preview of your solar panel, just to make sure that you get the behavior you desire. And then finally, you can download the panels to reconfigure the power supply. So I guess with any project, um you, you go through it and you kind of, uh, I guess you learn on the fly to an extent, you try things and uh, some things work, some things don't like those components that got blown up in the picture right there. But um, a big lesson that I learned certainly was, you know, everything on, on an analog, you know, circuit level is relatively technical. And I was tasked with doing the analog circuit design and also taking care of the enclosure and the heat sink, so dissipating the power that we're going to be um, producing. So I slept on uh, the enclosure a little bit because it seemed like it was going to be a simple uh, design endeavor, but it turns out it was, uh, it was one of the more difficult things, I guess time consuming things that I did, but um, you know, once it was done, uh, yeah, the finished product was uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, one thing I ran into with the embedded software was uh, verifying, I guess if you will, the uh, the importance of good documentation. Uh, again, we used the, uh, the Rabbit microcontroller I mentioned earlier, which is an excellent microcontroller. It has all the features we need, but because the company's been reacquired and whatnot, finding uh, accurate and up-to-date documentation for it is often difficult. And so uh, figuring out how to do certain things uh, took a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of digging to uh, figure out how to make that work. So. Fortunately, we didn't learn it the hard way, but in our project, we could have easily derailed if uh, we didn't specify how we wanted to send data to and from the computer and microcontroller ahead of time. Uh, doing something as simple as you know speaking or having a high-level language talk to a low-level language uh, <clears throat> rather tricky. We had to use some interesting techniques to do so.